In this video, our lead developer, Anthony, is going to break down exactly how to properly configure our quant view alerts for automation, as well as for the indicators. This way you are getting the fastest execution possible with no errors or missteps. Watch this video all the way through and be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how to set up alerts for any of the quant view strategies. Now, this particular uh, sequence of events is going to be exactly the same whether you are running through API automation or our prop automation service. Either way, this is going to be the same. And this will resolve issues like uh, if your alerts are not matching your chart, which is a very common issue. I'm going to show you exactly why that is. Okay. So the very first thing that you should do is create a brand new chart. You're going to open a new tab. And then we're just gonna create a new chart there. Okay, now what you'll do is you'll navigate to exactly what you wanna track. I'll just leave it on NQ1 here, but you'll find whichever symbol you want. You'll set it to your time frame, and you'll set it to, if you're using Renko, set it to your box size. Now this is the, um, th this is generally where most alerts will get thrown off. Whatever you set it to right here, five second, four box size right? This is what your alerts are going to be set on. If you change anything, you must delete and re-add the alert. If you don't, it's not going to work right, okay? So make sure that you're set on exactly what you want. All right, so now next what you're going to do is add in your Q-Wave strategy right here. Boom, right there, we've got it. Okay, now what you're going to do now is set up all of the settings just the way that you want them. Okay, so come in here. Uh, let's say we just want it to trade during uh, during business hours right here, during market hours, and then you know whatever settings you're gonna want. Now keep in mind if you're looking at this in the future, this may not look the same. So this particular box of settings, this doesn't matter for what you're doing in the future. All I want to express to you is that you set up this exactly the way you want it, whether it's this strategy or it's a different one that we have, or it's somebody else's strategy. It doesn't matter. You just need to set this up exactly as you want it. If you're going to be uh, using contracts, um, sending quantities through your alerts, then you'll want to set that up here, right? If you're not sending them through the alerts, you're abstracting that into your software. So for example, if, we use, uh, if we're using prop software that we sell, then you don't need to set the order size here. It doesn't matter what this says. Uh, just leave it at one if you want. And then also, if you want, if your strategy calls for it, you'll want to set on bar close down here, and that's going to actually kick off your alert um, when the bar closes. And the last thing I, I should mention as I'm doing this, there is a very big difference in the way the strategies read based on whether you have these wicks enabled or not. And you go under settings, we're here to wick. So you have wick, you turn that off, and it will change your entries and exits. Um, I'm not entirely sure why it calculates that, but it does. So make sure to look, if you're if you're using Renko, make sure to look at it both with Wix on and Wix off, because you see how it changed Rogue Aware. When I do this, um, I like to turn them off most of the time, but it will affect your strategy. So make sure that you're looking at that, you're setting that, and again, that's just, um, that has to uh, be saved with the chart. Otherwise, you know, if you load up the same chart again, you try to recreate your settings and you forget the wick, well, it's gonna all be different. So there you go. That's just another piece of that. Um, and like I say, as long as all of this is set, you're good to go. Once your strategy is set up properly here, once your chart is set up properly, what you're gonna do is set your alerts. So all we have to do is come right up here, dot, 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 and we click add alert on Qwave strategy. Now it's important to note, this is a strategy and not an indicator. In TradingView, there are two types of things you put on the chart. One is a strategy, one is an indicator. Strategies will populate this backtesting box down here that will say, um, you know, long open, long stop, or long close, or whatever, and they'll have actual movements like this on the chart. Indicators will not. You can set alerts on indicators, but that is a different method. To set a method, or to set an alert on a strategy, this is all you have to do. Add alert right there. Now, when you are testing, automation when you're um when you're trying to build your automated alert stack you want to be as specific as possible when you set these alerts okay it's going to help you i promise 
So what you want to do is something like QWave scalp. Um, and then what I like to do is I'll just write the ticker that I'm on. I'll put box size. I'll put time frame. And then if I've changed any of the settings from default, so you know, yeah, I'll do something like um, market hours, or if I change the strength coefficient, I'll say 50 strength. Um, whatever it is, I'll put in any other changes from default that I've done. I'll put them in here so that I can track what I'm doing in my alerts. Extremely important. A lot of automated trading is the records that you keep. Okay, I mean, that's a lot of manual trading too, but it's extremely important to automated trading. If you don't keep records, if you don't carefully notate these alerts, you are not going to be successful. So take notes and carefully notate what you are doing. All right, now down here in the message, this is all just junk and you can delete it, goodbye. And then what you're gonna do is paste in whatever your particular alert JSON is going to be. And I'll give you an example from the prop trader. And uh, so here I'm gonna give you an example from the prop trader. This is just a testing version on my desktop. So all we'll do is click generate JSON. And again, if, if you are using a different method, if you're using API, if you're using custom software I wrote, if you're using auto view, if you're using trade connect, if you're using traders post, whatever, uh, then there is a different way to get this information, but you're gonna need the same two pieces of information. Okay, now for a strategy in the prop trader, we have particular strategy ones, right? So we've got strategy JSON. This is a normal buy sell trade. And what that means is we bought to open, sold to close, or you sell to open and buy to close if you're shorting, right? That's what that means. Uh, I also have JSON in here for always in trades and these are ones which will reverse. So for example, if you wanted to automate uh, just the, the Q wave itself and uh, use those reversal signals, that's how you would do that. You would use these. Um, this always in strategy JSON. But nonetheless, what you're gonna to wanna to put uh, paste in there is just the information between the curly brackets, okay? I see people all the time, they grab this whole thing, and I put this whole thing in there, and they're like, why doesn't it work? It doesn't work because this shouldn't be in here. This is just the label for it, okay? So when you do this, just put in this information. That's all you need to do, is put in this information right here, all right? Now, once that's done, what you do is go to notifications and you put in your webhook URL. Um, that's the URL to our prop trader, so it's already done. And that's all you have to do to trade in the prop trader. And again, you know, it's, um, it's very similar for your, uh, your auto view or your trade connect. Now I'm gonna show you one difference to doing this. There is a difference. So if you're doing something like, um, you want to use the brackets in the prop trader, you want, to, you want to use the advanced trade management uh, stop loss take profit bracket. The difference is this. I'm going to go under here, go down to custom alerts, and this is where you're going to paste that JSON, both into the entry and you will put nothing in the exit. Okay? You will put nothing in the exit. Then what you're going to do, click OK, go back to add alert, and then there is something special that you need to post in here. All right, so you see this little help icon right here at the bottom? You can use special placeholders such as blah, blah, blah to pull in dynamic information. Click here to learn more about placeholders. We're gonna click there because we wanna learn more and we will scroll down and we will scroll down and here it is right here, strategy order alert message. Copy that. What this does, it returns the value of the alert message parameter, okay? What that is, is the special information that you just put close that, that you just put into here this is what it's going to return okay so you'll come back you'll set your alert and all you do to use those is put that in there that's it that's all you do and then put your you know put your alert information here right so we're going to put write all of your info here and again, if you don't, well, you're gonna fail at this. So make sure to write all of the info in there and so that you can keep track of exactly what your alerts are. And then you click create. Now, after you have clicked create, and this is extremely important, the way this chart is set up, what it's gonna do, I'll explain the, the technical background to this. 
what tra trading view does is they take a copy of the code behind the strategy and a copy of the alerts and they put it on a remote server so they put it on a server somewhere in the cloud and then what it does is that server runs with real-time data and that server sends the alerts to um, to wherever you want them to go so because of that if you wanted to change this alert you must delete it out of your alerts window and completely remake it go through that whole process again because otherwise you can change it here on your chart all you want so we'll go right here and we'll just change you know I don't like 75 I want 50 we'll go like that the alerts that you're getting through that webhook have not changed because the copy of what you sent did not change dynamically so you have to delete the old one and make a brand new alert okay every time uh, almost every time that there's an issue with alerts not matching the chart 99.9% uh, .9 of the time this is the reason why it's because your alerts were made on a different set of settings or they were made on a different chart and it does not match what you are looking at it is very very easy to get this wrong I have done this so many times where I've set alerts and they don't match the chart and I finally figured out almost 100% of the time it is my own dumb fault so make sure you do that and then once you're done come up here and you click those little see these little four box things click that click save template you can save the template so it'll save your settings and what you can do is come over here drop that down and you just click save layout um, and you want to save your layout so you want to save your chart and you want to save your indicator settings when you reload the chart it doesn't automatically populate indicator settings you can still populate them from right here so that's that's how you're gonna save it all right so those those are the main things to keep in mind and I'm gonna recap First of all, create a brand new chart. Make sure that your settings in here are exactly the settings that you want to run in your alert. Open the strategy settings. Make sure they are exactly what you want. Set alerts on that strategy here, as I showed you with the proper JSON, the proper webhook URL, and for the love of God, make sure to put in all of the information here in the alert name, track exactly what you did to it. Can you tell how important that is? I've said it probably a half dozen times, okay? And then save everything. Save the layout, save the indicator template, and then set your alerts on it, all right? That way you can come back to the exact chart that you should be on. And that is the same method, whether you are using the prop trader or you're using API or you're using um, you know, any of the other services out there. That's the exact same method that will solve, again, 99.9% .9 of issues that people have with alerts. Following this process is going to solve them. It is very easy to mess this up. Um, it's taken me a long time to get this perfect, but it's very easy to mess up. That will probably fix your issues. There is a very small amount of the time, and I'm, top it, I'm talking literally 0.1% where the alerts won't match, and it's usually just on one trade now and then and that's because of the difference in real-time data and the data that streams here to the chart because the remote server is getting real-time tick data and this one isn't so that's that that can happen every now and then but it's very rare um, if you have numerous alerts that are not matching then your problem I guarantee it is that your alerts aren't matching a chart and you need to delete them follow this process and remake them from scratch if you want access to all of our indicators, our strategies, all of the automation capabilities, be sure to click that first link in the description. You could try all of it 100% free for seven days. This also includes all of our training content, our community, and more. First link in the description. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see you in the next one.